Good morning and welcome to This Week at CPUSA.org. Uh, and good morning, Revolution. And hey, Scott. Morning, Joe. How's it going? Uh, it goes. It goes. Um, it's been a busy, busy, eventful week. What with the uh, all of the events around uh, Syria and Turkey and Trump and Pence and Mr. Giuliani and the uh, impeachment inquiry. And then we lost, uh, there, there was the uh, untimely uh, death of uh, Representative uh, Elijah Cummings, uh, which was a blow to the African-American people's movement and the democratic movement. It was a loss to America. Yeah, it really was. He, was a, he, he really um, what has even, especially recently been one of the, like the foremost, um, People in the, in the kind of uh, the democratic and uh, people struggle against against Trump and it's a yeah huge man he was a he was a good dude uh, it's a it's a real loss and Trump like went after him you know like white on race you know he was attacking uh, Cummings' reputation attacking his district the people of the great city of Baltimore it's a great working class city love me some Baltimore and um, so you know we got a we got a lot to uh, talk about. And then I didn't mention the most important thing was the uh, uh, GM strike. And it looks like there uh, is going to be uh, a settlement. Um, I believe that the uh, proposed contract is being sent out to the membership for a, a vote. Um, and then I just saw yesterday that the Chicago teachers went out on strike. Yep, they're out That's right now. I saw some pictures. It is. I, I was a I was a member of the CTU when I was uh, for my last few years in Chicago, and it's a it's a great organization with a, with a, a wonderful sort of fighting spirit, and, and it's been able to really build a movement with communities to um, uh, fight for uh, democratically run schools, for for well funded schools, for schools where uh, some equitable uh, public education. It, it's yeah, the CTU is great. I I, I miss it. You miss it, huh? Well, John Bactell says, I can imagine, because John, our former chairman, said that, you know, it's more than just a union. It's, it's they're trying to build a social movement there in uh, Chicago, and, and that's a big thing. Before we go further, we want to invite everybody to start a watch party. Just click on the button and share this program with your friends. Do it now so that other people can uh, see what is happening. Well, Scott, do you think, uh, you know, are we in the middle of a strike wave? We kind of talked about that the other night at the uh, party's national board meeting. It we're, we're certainly in, a, in a, a, a big upswing in sort of for labor generally, I think. So um, more and more strikes, more people out on strike. Um, so looking at just at the past couple months, uh, when GM went out, when the UAW GM workers went out, that was 49,000 people. The Chicago Teachers Union and um, it's uh, an SEIU, the SEIU local that, that uh, represents some of the um, uh, cafeteria uh, and I believe janitorial workers. Um, that's another 35 or 40,000 people. This is, these are huge numbers of people taking part in strike actions. And we also have to look at you know, um, the, the, the increase in organizing. Um, they're organizing drives underway all across the country and especially all across the South, which is a huge deal. So I think it's um, a strike wave. I think it's a, 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 a rising wave of labor uh, in general. The Mack truck drivers are Mack out on drivers, strike. Yeah. Or, uh, not drivers, uh, sorry, workers. Workers, yeah. And the Mack truck workers and then the uh, copper workers and the uh, steel workers a union out in Arizona, I think 3,000 or so of them are out on strike and uh, so on. And then there are a number of others. In fact, I read last year that 185,000 was the 485,000, I forget the number, but it was the largest number of people on strike in uh, 2018 since the 1970s. And the other thing we have to take into account is um, union density is still very low. Uh, something around 12% uh, of workers are represented by a union. But the thing that the working class has learned from capitalism is that our, our, our power together is more than just the sum of our individual 
strength, right? Um, so even, even at the, the present sort of low level of unionization, uh, labor is playing a huge role and has an enormous, uh, organized labor is playing a huge role and has an enormous power. And as that power grows, um, it's gonna, well, we saw what it could do in the 1930s. It reshaped the whole, uh, you know, sort of legal and political framework of the country for um, 40 years. For the better, for the better, no, no doubt about it. And, but in order to, uh, for that to happen, the political landscape has to change the composition of the Congress um, and the uh, presidency and also the courts because everything is weighted against organized labor. You know, they're trying their best to break the back of, uh, of uh, labor. That is their aim. There is no, no question about that at all. But it also seems that something's happening uh, in the working class as a whole and that, you know, 88% uh, of the class that's not organized, you know, including in some of the more conservative sections of it. For example, I read um, recently that Trump support amongst white women with high school diplomas has dropped by 12 percentage points. It's now like 42%, which, uh, which is a big, big, big drop, you know? So that's, uh, I mean, amongst men, it hasn't really changed. Mm -hmm. but women um, are taking another look at this administration. Um, and I understand that it is uh, one unease with uh, the uh, racist rhetoric and the racist immigration policy, but also issues like um, uh, prescription drug plans uh, and the refusal of the GOP to address the issue of uh, 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 preconditions and, uh, and uh, this whole attack on Obamacare. Now, I know you live in a small town and, and your evidence might be antidotal, but it seems like you know, something is, uh, something really important is, is uh, happening and it's, and, and it's having a, uh, a impact up the political uh, ladder, you know? I, I think part of it is that, you know, uh, people, especially um, women are beginning to reevaluate, you know, whatever support they may have given uh, Trump. Um, but you know the other the other side of that is the whole political conversation is changing in this country uh, um, as issues like Medicare for all and student loan forgiveness and free college you know come to sort of start to look like political realities. Um, it you know it changes what people talk about. So I hear you know people in in the diners that I go to uh, now talking about. Um, me too, talking about, um, you know, student loans, talking about um, the fact they lack retirement security. And then these are, I don't know, these, these are becoming regular political questions, I think, in, in my area in a way that they, they weren't before. Well, something is, something is definitely happening. And, they're, they're, and, and, and as I say, it, it looks like it's rippling up, you know, and so um, I noticed that the uh, House of Representatives uh, this week voted to condemn Trump's uh, policy uh, on Turkey and Syria. That was an important break. The energy secretary just resigned. He's getting attacked on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, but the editorial page is still supporting him. To, um, the uh, a Senate, well, only one or two senators are speaking out. Uh, what's his name from Utah? Um, Romney, uh, Mitch, and, uh, uh, although Mitch McConnell, um, has, has said that, uh, he wants to get the impeachment trial started in the Senate so we can get over, get it over by Christmas. And he released an ad, um, in his home state, I believe, uh, saying that, um, uh, a vote for him is a no vote on impeachment. Um, well, he's already drawn he's his- already, He's already signaled to you know, what is- What's gonna happen. Well, we're gonna have to see because I think that as the opinion polls change um, and they are changing, a majority now support uh, an inquiry, a majority uh, 
uh, now uh, uh, support impeachment itself in the uh, House, and about 50-50% uh, split, rough split on whether or not Trump ought to be reached, um, um, uh, ought to be kicked out of office. And so do you think, well, there's an uptick in the class struggle, maybe there's a strike wave. Is, uh, uh, is, is, is there like a new political moment taking place in the country? Is that, is there so, like a- uh, I, I, think, I think for sure, I don't, I don't think it's just the, this country. I think there's a, there's a, a worldwide uh, shift, um, oh. uh, or at least, I mean, uh, worldwide is um, probably, uh, you know, I don't have evidence to back all that up, but certainly uh, in the in the sort of um, advanced capitalist world, the, the imperialist mm. powers, U.S. and 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 the European countries, um, uh, it's looking like, you know, the neoliberal moment is over, right? This sort of optimism about uh, capitalist globalization about um, the fact that you, the idea that you could divorce, you could have a social sort of liberalism with with economic uh, sort of support for the for capital free market fundamentalism, like all of that seems to be crumbling. Um, and we have on the one hand, a, a working class left anti capitalist socialist left. Uh, developing um, social democratic left, if we want to say very, very broadly, um, and on the other hand, the the section of the ruling class that has rejected um, the old neoliberal kind of global model in favor of um, neo fascism or whatever, you know, that's getting more powerful too. Uh, so it's like the the center has been hollowed out somehow, and we're we're growing it at both ends. The, the lines of the class struggle are becoming clearer. Well, that's interesting. We, we ought to you know, pursue that a, a little bit because I see that the center and the Democratic Party is fighting for their place in the sun. Now, I was watching a debate the other night and there's several centrist uh, Democrats running and they went after Elizabeth Warren like nobody's business on the issue of Medicare for all. You know, she was just a tax. Oh, no, she's going to raise tax. Are you going to raise taxes on the middle class? Mm. It's a, it's a non, it's ridiculous. It's, it's like saying um, that somebody who gets a wage increase is getting a tax increase. Of course they are if they move up a tax bracket, but they're also like, it, 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 what, it, what it makes me think of is the, the way Republicans used to talk in the, the late 80s and the early 90s. Um, the big thing was, oh, these bleeding heart liberal, these tax and spend liberals, they're going to raise your taxes to pay for all these. Um, and of course, the right is saying that now in the Wall Street Journal and the National Review, but even mm. um, sort of democratically aligned uh, outlets like The Atlantic, it, since the debate, they've published two articles um, basically saying Elizabeth Warren is lying to you about her plan for middle class. Wow. They're trying to trap her, you know, they're yeah. trying to trap her to saying that she's going to raise taxes and she needs to, well, she'll do what she wants to do. But if it was, if it was me, I would say tax the rich. And by the way, cut the overbloated Pentagon budget. Absolutely. On, get some money. That's where all the money is going to the big uh, war buck cop corporations. I mean, come on. And nobody is addressing that, even uh, on the left of the uh, spectrum of the Democratic Party candidates. And that's a, that's a, that's a huge issue. Cut the freaking military budget, you know? I mean, and, come on. Um, so if you, uh, if you go to cpusa.org um, and look at our current mailbag answer, it actually gets to the question of taxes. Uh, somebody wrote in asking, what CPUSA's stance on the Federal Reserve and on income and property taxes, should they be abolished? And I wrote the answer, um, mostly talking about taxes since I know more about the tax code than the Federal Reserve. Um, but there's, um, it delves into how our tax system is set up and what changes we need in the short term and the long term. Mm. Uh, so I, and I think it's a pretty good response. So uh, check it out. Basically um, in the short term, tax the rich. Uh, in the long term, redistribute or make sure that, um, you know, uh, 
have socialism, put the working class in control so we're not making billionaires and then trying to take their wealth back through taxes. Sounds like a plan. What else is going on at CPUSA.org? How is that discussion coming on? Uh, going real well. Um, so we, we got a few pieces in that are about to go up, um, uh, including one- What's the subject? So uh, the subject is how do we help people link uh, sort of class struggle and the struggle for um, ecologically sustainable development. Okay. Uh, and um, so we've got a, a piece up from Anita Waters on the metabolic rift that we talked about last week. Um, uh, a, a new uh, CPUSA member in uh, West Virginia who specializes in fisheries science uh, sent us a piece about um, the notion of the best available science and, and what that means in terms of um, developing a, a kind of socialist orientation in our uh, approach to climate change and jobs. Uh, so that's gonna go up today. Uh, we've got a couple other pieces, um, one on imperialism. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna be, um, uh, we're going to be putting up a few today. And uh, I just published a new Marxist IQ uh, on the Russian Revolution, which was just posted uh, on uh, the website. And I think I got it up on Facebook. So what is your score? We want to know, you know, so please take the test and share it, share it with your uh, uh, friends. And, and um, don't forget, uh, uh, if you haven't registered yet for this Sunday's webinar on uh, the Green New Deal and Green Strategy um, with Mark Brodine. Uh, please do so. You can find a link to register on our website. You can find it on our Facebook page. Uh, we'll repost it today, in fact. Um, and uh, make sure you get signed up. I think it's going to be a great, uh, uh, yeah, great, uh, a great discussion. We'll have the first part of it this Sunday night. And then uh, next Sunday night, the 27th, we'll have the second part. Oh, great. So um, uh, that's going to be Sunday at what time? Oh, you know, I can't remember if it's six o'clock or eight o'clock. Um, let me, uh, I'll, I'll post on Facebook. Um, you can find please it there. Do. Please do. So everybody can, uh, can uh, check it out. All right. Well, I think that that just about does it for us uh, uh, this week, uh, uh, Scott. Um, we'll be coming back uh, uh, next Friday. The uh, party is uh, getting ready to hold the first meeting of our national committee in a few weeks. And we're thinking about these questions, you know, are we in a new political moment? Uh, what is taking place in the ranks of the working class? You know, are there big uh, shifts taking place and there appear to be so? Uh, and then most importantly, you know, what uh, things do we need to do to help move it along, you know? Um, and by moving it along, for us, it always means putting the working class in a place where it can fight more effectively and uh, lead. Uh, that's the most important uh, uh, thing. And you know, I don't know how we can do it, Scott, without supporting uh, this impeachment uh, drive. You know, some of our friends are saying the impeachment is a diversion um, and that uh, it, it's not putting the uh, workers' interests uh, front and center. But that to me is kind of loco because if you look, the brunt of the Trump administration's attack is, is against organized labor in particular and workers in general. They're trying to systematically undo every single protection that if, workers if, have. I don't, had. I don't know how anyone can think that, that uh, breaking the the power of the Trump regime, destabilizing the right, um, how you couldn't see that as as a essential first step. I'm not sure. And this in, impeachment isn't just it isn't something that you know Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer sat down and decided to do it. Nancy Pelosi did not want impeachment, um, at least as far as her public statements indicate. Right? What made impeachment? Um, possible and hopefully inevitable is mass, the mass pressure of the, of the broad democratic movement. This is- below. people demanded it, you know? And then when, when all of that craziness came out about, you know, the quid pro quo in the Ukraine, 
And um, the fact that Trump is hosting the G7 at, at one of his own resorts, directly hey, profiting from. It's a, it's a bourgeois town, you know. <laughs> And uh, he's a bourgeoisie and he's trying to make that bourgeois. I mean, you know, you're going to blame the man for trying to, make <laughs> you know, for his children and all of that. <laughs> yeah, he, need, he needs to, he, he's just helping his family, man. Yeah, this is America, you know. <laughs> you know you to, you make that green, you know. <laughs> uh, we're not in favor of, uh, of folks making uh, an honest dollar so long as it's honest. Don't, don't take advantage of your position. And, uh, and then I go, and then they also say it's, by the way, it's against the Constitution. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what do you call it? The emoluments. Oh, yes. oh, yes. yeah. Anyway, so we'll be back next week. Same time, same station. See you later. Have a great weekend, Scott. Really? Take care. Fight the power. Impeachment is the key to the door. It's the, it's the first step. The stage. You can't get around it. <laughs> Take care. Yeah. Bye.